So, so far what we've got is uh, this project that's coming together pretty quickly. The last thing that I said was if you choose the flow transition, you get this weird, cool animation. It's like you're swiping the page away and it, then it comes into view, and it automatically animates the opposite direction. That's flow, F-L-O-W. There's about six, uh, six transitions, not as many um, as the icons. There's you know, 40 icons that we can work with and make up our own icons. To make up our own animations, we can do that, but that's honestly pretty complicated. So we've got about six of them to work with, and that should be pretty much what we need, but uh, you can always design your own. And so what we've got here is um, page one and page two. Some of you might have noticed this quirk, but if you think about it, it's not really a quirk. If you were testing your app and then, and then you've been refreshing your browser, as most of us have gotten used to, it's a little bit of a chore to go back to run every time. Maybe you're just refreshing your browser. You might have noticed this. When you were on page two and you clicked the refresh button, uh, the back button didn't work. Well, the reason for that is if you're refreshing page two, it's starting from page two, it doesn't know that there was a page one. The back button works through history. There was a page one, we clicked to go to page two, there's history there then the back button would be able to take us back one point in history, web browser history. If we refresh on page two, there's no web browser history. We're on page two. That's the starting point. Therefore, the back button doesn't work. So I'm just showing that, that uh, sometimes little quirks like that will happen. But if you think about it, that probably will never happen on your real app. There really is no way to get into page two when you load up your app. It always is going to go to page one. We can't refresh page 2, so that's nothing that we might need to worry about as, a, as an Android app, but as a web app, we might have to. So another thing that comes built in with jQuery Mobile is to be able to alter the design, of course, because this gray design is going to get pretty boring pretty quickly. So we've got the ability to theme, to change the theme of our projects. So we'll introduce a brand new attribute, data theme. So this also can be applied on a case-by-case -case basis. It's pretty cool. We can change the theme of the whole app, of this one screen, or this one button. Everything can be themed throughout our whole project. So we'll start on the large level and then go, go deeper down. Let's say I want to change the design. I'm tired of the, of the plain gray color. So let's go back to our section one, and actually what we want to do, um, thinking a little bit outside the box, why do we have section two um, ID lesson one? Why don't we have an ID on section one? We should, because we might have to jump from section to section to section. And technically, we have no name for section one. So we might be on lesson four, and we want to get back to the home screen. We're not going to press back, 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 back. We want to press a button that takes us back to home. We're going to say the first section is our home screen. So it needs an ID before I get to themes. Let's add an ID. We've got data role page on line 12. We will add the next attribute, ID. I, I like to add ID as the last item up there. There's no right or wrong, but I add it there to quickly find it because when you've got a lot of code to work with, I can always find it at the end of my code there. Uh, ID home. I can call it page one, I can call it start, beginning, welcome, whatever. I'm calling it home just so that when I make links elsewhere throughout my project, you should see that logically eventually we'll do a href quotes pound home. And that would take us to our home screen. Wherever we're at, we're in the, within the project. Now we'll add themes. So this doesn't really do anything to our project. It's still going to behave exactly the same. But if we had a button, if we didn't have this back button, which only relies to take you back to the immediately previous page, if I was on lesson four and wanted to go back to home, I would need a button that says home. 
and then it would work because I have now an ID. So if I want to add a different design to my project, there's two built in, which of course then we can add more. We're currently looking at the default one. So let's add a brand new attribute to ID home, to section home, a brand new attribute after data role, data theme. The default theme is A. Let's see what data theme B looks like. Save it and run it. Simply that will give you a brand new design. Let's try that. Save it and run it. Here you go. Theme B, the dark theme. Um, and then go to lesson one. We never specified a theme for section two, so therefore it's the default, which is theme A. There is a way that we can later on specify a theme throughout our whole project, of course, but right now I'm showing you that theme B is applied to page to section one, and uh, theme A default is. Uh, Section 2 is default theme A. <clears throat> uh, if you try a th data theme C, nothing happens, or D, nothing happens, etc. Because we never defined a section, a, a theme C or D or whatever. A few years ago, a few versions ago of jQuery Mobile, we're currently using 1.4.5, but on earlier versions, 1.3 and 1.2, they did have customized built-in data theme A, B, C, D, E, F, and I forget what they were, but, you know, F was yellow, and H or whatever was blue, and that's nice just to show off that you can activate themes, but it wasn't that useful, because not that yellow color was never going to be your yellow color for your company. That blue was never going to be that blue for your company. So they just took it out, A and B are the default dark or light, and then of course we can define our own C, D, E, all the way up to Z. And that means we can have completely different designs and colors per screen if we wanted to, uh, or more judiciously. But we will of course be more complex. At the moment I'm just showing easily change themes. Uh, we should be able to, let me just confirm, we should be able to then specify article data theme A. We should be able to apply a theme per section. Yeah, there we go. So I could mix and match. I've got article. In article, I gave that data theme A the default, so I overrid that color, that design. So now what's inside of the content section inherited again the A theme. It looks kind of weird but I'm just showing you that we can mix and match. Later when we make our own themes, this might be useful because let's say we open a special screen, you know, edit user profile. I want that to look different than the rest of the, of the, of the social media app that I might invent, let's say. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to keep that actually. And notice the quirk about it is it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. We would have to deal with that quirk. I'm just showing you though we can do that but I'm not going to keep it permanent. I think it looks too weird. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say that from lesson lesson one, let's say we'll write a little bit more text and that there's a keyword that is an acronym and if we click on it we get a pop-up that explains what the acronym is. 
Uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. We'll do it one way like this. I want a brand new pop-up to, to appear. Maybe this pop-up could include a video, and then, there, and then someone appears on screen and teaches you something. So we have the knowledge to do this so far. Um, let's go to the very end and create a new section. Actually, our section will be a whole complete screen. We want this to be... Let's see the best way. Uh, okay, we'll do it this way, then we'll do it another way. Never mind what I was about to say. Let's, uh, let's create a new section. Data role page. It needs an ID so we can reference it. We'll call this uh, help. So a new section, a new screen for our app. It's going to be a page. And it has an ID so we can reference it, like when we make links. We will make a header and an article, but not a footer. I don't want a footer, a strip down at the bottom of of the screen because a, a pop-up box, a dialog box often has just the head and the content, no real footer, and we can close it and up on the header we'll do H1 again uh, we'll just call it video heading to here we'll say uh, video tutor let's imagine here that we had a video just, I just want to put something to show you the point of this so we've got a new section and a new page full of content let me let you write that up but then we're gonna add a link so that that is accessible because right now there's no way to get to it we can add a link similar to before and then the big difference will be that it will pop up like a dialog box instead of like a whole page of content. So go ahead and create that section like that and then we'll go on. So we're going to access this video tutor screen from the first lesson. The first lesson is in the section ID lesson 1. So within the article, line, line 33 of lesson 1, within the article, within the content, we've got the body tag, the basic element to show, and then I trail off. Let's say we have something called video help oh sorry let's do it the same way we did on the on the previous page let me delete that the same way I did it there which was to push the P tag down there and move the text right here just to be consistent and then we add a break and then video help we just change that paragraph to be a multi-line paragraph. Break that line, BR, and we'll write video help. Same as page one. Same as page one, then we will add the A tag. href, just like page one. But now we've got a brand new page called help. That'll be pound help. We need to get used to within the href 
to always write that pound symbol. Yeah. Because this has got an ID. Mm -hmm. It's an ID. The ID basically means the pound symbol. So don't write the pound symbol on ID equals, but do write the pound sign on href equals. You're just going to have to get used to that. We want to upgrade this from a plain old link into data role button. Uh, well, I hope you in just a moment. Did you already create the section? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then just back up to line uh, 30, 37 or so, and we're adding that, that line right there, that tag to make a link. This is, we can add an icon, of course, in a transition. Don't worry about that yet. So let's say we've got this text. It's got a link. This should work exactly the same as others that we've seen. No big deal. Then we're going to change this so that it becomes a pop-up box. I forgot here, you might not have, but you need uh, in the section we had a data roll of page, we needed a data roll of header for the header, and a data roll of content <coughs> for the article. I was about to forget that, but a lot of this, you know, we do over and over because it uh, is consistent. So just to show you that I that even I don't always have it memorized, I am forgetting how to make that dialog box, which obviously we can look it up. Let's try one more time. So we're obviously going to make a pop-up happen. I'm forgetting the code for the moment. Let's look it up. You might say uh, you might say that's why obviously you want references because right now I'm forgetting the code so this will be anticlimactic sorry um, I was trying to make this into a pop-up box and the two ways that I thought it was wasn't showing up so 
if you if you looked it up yourself, don't tell me yet. But um, let me just switch gears for a moment. Uh, I will look it up in just a moment. But the the point is that I'm able to create more content screens relatively easily, right? We've got different sections, and this section is supposed to be a box that pops up. If and then in this box, I could have a video. Um, we'll we'll see how to do that, of course. Um, when I look up how to make the dialog box, but we're getting pretty pretty advanced pretty quickly. We started off with still the same HTML, uh, the same HTML skeleton, those same eight lines, and then we started to add those three lines of jQuery mobile and such, and then the semantic HTML. I don't know if I called it that earlier, but these tags over here that have a meaning is is known as semantic HTML semantics. There's a meaning. The header, the article, the footer, the section. That's the latest HTML that has a meaning. Semantic HTML. And then also with these data roles and such we were able to create visually and behaviorally things that were more advanced than what we were just looking at a day or, or a few days ago. So everything that I'm talking about here, of course, is jQuery Mobile. Uh, I want to show you something online in your web browser. Let's go to wikipedia.org.org. You've probably heard of Wikipedia. It's been around 15 years. Um, so let's go to wikipedia.org. Down at the bottom, search search box. On the search box, click uh, search for jQuery Mobile. Go to Wikipedia.org, and down here, jQuery Mobile. And here's an article. jQuery Mobile is a touch-optimized web framework also known as a mobile framework, more specifically a JavaScript library, currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a w wide variety of smartphones and tablet computers, made necessary by the growing but heterogeneous tablet and smartphone market. The jQuery mobile framework is compatible with other mobile app frameworks and platforms such as PhoneGap, Worklight, and more. So what this is saying is, again, it's in a sense it's a template to be able to quickly create tablet and smartphone friendly websites. Couple that with PhoneGap or Worklight or Cordova, etc. Then we can take that mobile friendly website and make it a mobile app, a real app that you can get from the app stores. It's currently in development. So the latest version came out in October last year and the new one's coming out soon. We can go look at the official website. It came out for the first time nearly five years ago. So this has been an ongoing and maturing project. And I've used it for several years, since um, probably 2012 at least. So it's been improving and such. Uh, further, it goes on to talk about it's compatible with all major desktop browsers as well as well as platforms like Android, iOS, Windows Phone, etc. built on top of jQuery core so it has a minimal learning curve. If you already know jQuery it'll be easier. You can do themes, it's HTML5 driven, etc. Quick example here. And then a basic example. So what we've done so far today is this. We basically learned this example code from Wikipedia and we brought it to life line by line. We might not fully understand everything that we've done. That'll come with more lessons. But we've taken this code as an example and we've, we've, uh, we've brought it to life in Notepad. And then it goes on to say, well, it works really well on iOS and not so well on Symbian and this and that. This is totally old. Don't even pay attention to this, however. 
because uh, it's it's listing PhoneGap version 0 0.9. PhoneGap is currently on version like 4, I think, so this is pretty old. Don't worry about this. Initial release, release this has been updated, uh, if you care about that, and other links. Um, and so this example right here, actually, um, I wrote it. I updated the Wikipedia article, and uh, everyone that comes to this article in the world and looks at this, they're using my example code. So I am famous on Wikipedia. So does that count world-renowned? I can prove that right there. There's my name. I'm the last person that edited this article. And throughout the years and such. So the point of this is we're getting another perspective. What jQuery is? jQuery Mobile. And it's, it's a great framework. It's a starting point. It's a template to create uh, mobile-friendly websites, and I need to go back to this article and change this because PhoneGap is one version of the of the software that we will use in month two. But PhoneGap is a variation of the larger project called Cordova. So, if you go look at PhoneGap, also known as Cordova, I think it mentions it in here. This is what then will allow us to translate basically any web page into a compatible Android app to access the camera of the Android device, to access the files in your device, to access the compass of your Windows phone, to access the vibration of your um, Firefox phone. So eventually when we get to Cordova, also known as PhoneGap, you're going to hear them interchangeably all the time, but I'm going to mostly call it Cordova because that's like the parent project. PhoneGap is a child project. Uh, so Cordova will allow us to take our code, press a few buttons, and we've got an Android app. Obviously that's much easier than it will be, but that's the theory of it. So I'm bringing you this Wikipedia article because, of course, you can keep clicking and learning and going on and finding more out. And a lot of us are very creative that way. So check out these links. Follow this. What is a library? And what is PhoneGap and WorkLite? And you'll keep learning. So we'll look at another web resource, and then it's about the end of the day. Uh, well, let's look at the official jQuery website. What's that all about? On the right side over here, we'll have jQueryMobile.com, so you can either click it or go to the address. So go to jQueryMobile.com, and here's all the information straight from the horse's mouth. A touch optimized web framework. jQuery Mobile is a is an HTML5 based user interface system designed to make responsive websites and apps that are accessible on all smartphone, tablet, and desktop devices. And it just goes on and on, why it's so great, theme, roller, and such. Let's go to the, the fastest way to, to learn from, from this website is, on, is go to the demos. The API documentation is more for the hardcore people, but if we go to the demos, first it'll say, well, what version of jQuery do you want to work with? We want the latest one. 145. And I want to know what are all of these icons that the instructor says we have access to? Well, if you scroll down on the right side, CSS framework, you will have the documentation to tell us all the icons and what the appropriate code is. So go to there. Icons. There's explanation, of course, built in icons, blah, 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 examples. If we have data icon equals action, we have that little action button. Data icon equals alert. We get the alert icon. Arrow D, arrow down. So all of these demos are going to show you the possibilities live, and you'll always see view source. So then it'll show you there's the actual code. Now this version is a little bit different than what we've done because it's the more advanced version. So I'm showing the most straightforward, simple version. But basically, if I want a little video camera in my icon, data icon equals video. If I want a tag, like maybe for shopping, data icon equals tag. If you want a Dragon Ball, I mean a star in a circle, 
its data icon equals star. And so, oh, there's a little shop magnifying glass, which is sh search. So a lot of these have a built-in meaning. When you see this little bag, that must mean related something to shopping. This star, though, doesn't have a built-in meaning. In your opinion, if you'd like to say, what would you, what would you think the star icon would, would mean? Would you rate something? Oh, well, ratings, yeah. We can, we can check user ratings and such. Okay, what about, what would, what is this one right here? What does that one mean? Power, turn it off, or log out, maybe. Phone obviously has a meaning. What's this little thing here? Location. Location. Maybe, maybe pull up a map to, to see something on a map. So some of these have a built-in meaning, pretty straightforward. Uh, what about that? What would you say that has a meaning of? Maybe, maybe the keypad of a phone, maybe, or selectable icons, or maybe apps. Those maybe look like the rows of apps on my phone. So that one is one of the ones I think is very ambiguous. It doesn't quite have a meaning. Some of these icons stand alone by themselves, and some of them you'll have to use with text. So this is called grid, but if you put text there to give it a meaning, it could get a meaning. Like the one I used earlier was bullets for lesson one. If you back up over here, bullets and bars. So those three, you know, I used it in the context of the, these are our lessons. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. That could be used for other things, like maybe data. And we've got these bars, which are popular nowadays for like a drop-down menu. Volume, arrows, carrots, check marks. I'm going to go back transitions. Remember I said animations. We've got a few animations to choose from. Go to the transitions here and you'll get live demos of how these transitions look and then you can view source. So we've got fade, pop, we looked at those, flow, we've got slide fade, not too many of them. Let's say, and here we'll show it how it does it look like as a whole page or as a dialogue. So pop really works well as a dialogue. Pops open like that. As a whole page, not so good. Slide. So I bring to you jQuery Mobile because this is with a manual. This is the definition of everything about jQuery Mobile. Unfortunately, I don't quite like that it's not quite structured for learning. There's really no lesson one, two, and three. The best that I would recommend is start on the demos and go through these in this order. Technically, they're not in a lesson order. But I would go in and read each one of these, and they'll increase your knowledge little by little. And we will be using the documentation here also to further our project. And so I'm looking up how to make a dialog box. You've also got on the left side quick ways to, to jump around. Dialog page. Here we go. Under the dialog section, dialog page, any page can be presented as a module dialog. Uh, la, 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 la. Data transition, transition, closing dialog. Oh, here we go. Any page can be presented as a module dialog by adding data dialog true attribute to the page. Okay, that's what I was forgetting. So let's back up. It's saying data dialog equals true, adding it to any page, and it'll become a dialog box. This was changed because the code changes every once in a while, and I was remembering the old code, which didn't work. So I'm going to go back to... Line 44, where I had my new section, data dialog true. 
So now we're saying, make this brand new page behave like a dialog box. True. It still needs an ID, of course, so that we can reference it via the links and buttons. It's a brand new section, of course, and um, it should then open as a dialog box. Notice it's spelled dialog, not like the other way. There's a couple of ways to spell dialog, isn't there? It's that dialog. I'm adding this to the section. And if you save it and run it, you'll see that everything else fades out. You get a pop-up box um, that fades in because I never specified a transition in my button. And uh, it shows up in the middle of the screen with an automatic close button. See that? Close. And so if I wanted to further animate like a real pop-up box, I go back to the code where I made the button, data transition, pop. So now it will also animate. So those two things there. To quickly put this together, the new section, we've got data roll page, data dialog, true, and then the button itself, we added data transition. <coughs> transition from this page to this page, this section to this section, with a pop. And pop looks great when you've got a dialog. So you see there, people people sometimes ask, well, how do you know all of this? How do you memorize it? Well, I can maybe know and memorize just enough to fake it, but then I know where to look it up. jQueryMobile.com or a textbook or other websites. Um, you don't have to mem have it all memorized. Legend has it, supposedly, Alexander Graham Bell didn't know his own phone number because he always had someone to ask what it was. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the day, so I'll start helping people. So just wait one quick moment. Question over here. Yeah. Well, just uh, one moment, everyone. We're still in class, and a question is being asked. So if you're helping your neighbors, please be a little quieter. I'm talking to you two especially here. I'm saying we're still in class, please. Can we respect that? So uh, you're asking where, what language is it in? It's uh, not exactly a language. It's just that jQuery Mobile adopted those names uh, in the specification. So they, the team of jQuery Mobile, you know, decided we're going to use arrow-l or arrow-u to represent that. So they just kind of made it up, but it's just bla basic plain text that has a meaning because we've got jQuery mobile. The documentation tells us if you want your own icon, there is a way for you to define your own icons. It's not exactly that you're going to write it in a language because it needs to also be linked to a graphic. Mm -hmm. Technically, all of those graphics are coming from a folder of graphics. It's just that we simply write data icon equals home, and it basically pulls the home.jpg graphic and shows it, in a sense. So if we want our own icons, down here it'll tell us. Custom icons. Look at that. There's no skull icon, but if you view the source, you know, all of this code here, which we'll do together, of course, 
we're having my own we're having our own unique icon which is also coupled if you look over here the HTML here and the CSS is here the CSS is then saying show the skull icon so it's a mixture of HTML and CSS with the shorthand of jQuery mobile is this no it's just plain old uh, plain old plain it's um, just text Specifically, what we're looking at here is CSS. See, it's got dot, UI, etc. That's uh, CSS. And this is just a path in a Windows folder. So it's just, it's just text. So the, we've gone pretty far so far. Let me start to wrap up the main lecture, then we'll do help. Um, we should hopefully be seeing here that we're getting the seeds of something pretty powerful and so what we're doing here then is uh, we're going to pull this all together to create an, an app, a full featured powerful app but at the moment we are building little by little we're building little by little a, um, a web app and if you, I, I apologize I didn't mention that on other days especially if you were new if you are new, the goal that we're striving toward by the end of this class is on the website vmcampus.com slash sdce. If you go to that website and click down at the bottom mobile site, this mobile site here is all jQuery mobile. So this address right here is our example site. I've mentioned it before for the class, but if you were new, you might not have seen it. This is made in jQuery mobile. Look at the custom colors. If you browse around, you'll see custom icons and graphics and everything. That is what we're striving for for the end of month one. Eventually, this will become an app um, with more features, such as the camera, um, a database, other cool stuff. So, this is what we got so far, and we were quickly be uh, able to work with jQuery Mobile. Where, uh, when we get more advanced, we're going to download these files because, again, what if the internet goes down? Suddenly, our app on our mobile device. What if the person is on a bad part of town and they don't have reception? Well, they can't they then cannot access the jQuery mobile resources and your app will just be black and white one long screen of content. So we'll download those files next time and have them as, as local copies and therefore we can reference them and use them without an internet connection. But at this point we're going to end the main lecture. I'm going to put the this code in the network folder of course if you want a copy of it. I'm going to upload the videos as always and we're going to have some lab time if you need it. You need to send me an email, it's on the syllabus, and then uh, request the videos for this class, because I teach more than one, and I'll send you the links. So that's it for the moment. Um, have a good weekend. Practice this stuff, and when we come back, we'll learn some more.